All right, your first step is to remove the hardware from the wheels. You want to make sure and keep all your nuts, uh, bolts, and crush washers together as a set so that you put the same ones back together. Simply removed all the uh, hardware and separated the two halves. It's a good idea to take a look at the condition if you're getting these you know, wheels. Make sure that that uh, surface, the mating surface, is nice and smooth. I went ahead and I figured before I separate the wheels, I want to mark at least two holes, one on each side, so that I make sure and put the two halves back together the same way that they came apart. Not sure if that really matters, but I thought it'd be probably a good idea just to make sure that I put the halves back the way that they came from the factory. So I've got the two halves marked up. I go ahead and uh, remove uh, the two halves. You can see I've got a marked tape there. And then it's just a matter of pulling out that uh, center hub uh, from the wheel have on the right side there you see that simply pulls right out no problem and then I'm going to go ahead and start here uh, the first thing you want to do is start with the wheel have that's going to be on the uh, axle side so the inner wheel I took this uh, o-ring and lubed it up with some petroleum jelly you could use grease or whatever you have there and then what you're going to be doing is basically sliding that down over the wheel have this is what's going to join or seal the two wheel halves later on and we're going to be sliding that into the groove but to start with we've got to push it past the groove and up onto the hub a little ways and the uh, the petroleum jelly just helps it slide up there and also keeps the uh, rubber uh, pliable down the road. Went ahead and just clean up the face there you want to make sure you don't have any grit or sand or anything because again this is the uh, the face that's going to be mating up with the other half of the wheel so we don't want anything that's going to cause a, any kind of a gap there. All right, I've got the uh, O-ring slid up on the rim. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my tire prepped for pushing this half of the wheel half. Again, this is the inner wheel, not the one with the valve stem on it. So I made up a concoction of uh, dish soap, a little heavier on the dish soap side, and then um, mixed it with some water and just made up a tire lube here so I could get that bead nice and uh, lubricated to push this rim into. That way, uh, there would be uh, a little bit better chance to be pushing it in there. I did try a dry fit and it would not go in. So using a little bit of the dish soap and water, I was able to get this to slide in. Although the rim was starting to bottom out uh, on the table, so what I ended up doing just to make sure that I had it fully seated there was I grabbed a couple 2x4s off the bench, jacked up the tire a little bit to give me a little bit more clearance on the bottom. And then that allowed me to push that rim a little bit deeper into the tire because the tire, of course, was flexing. So once I did that, I felt that it was popped in there nice and just simply flipped it over. Just double checking the bead there. The next step was to get to that uh, O-ring, but I had a little visitor here. No problem, got rid of him. Go ahead and set the second half. This is the valve stem side, the outside of the rim matching up the holes with the blue hole tape that I had put on there earlier. And then it was just a matter of putting those, uh, of the six center bolts, I put one in every other hole because that aluminum hub that I removed earlier is going to go in the opposite holes. So you want to make sure and uh, tighten down every other hole in the center, get the two halves together and do kind of a uh, staggered uh, lug nut pattern, you know, star pattern when you're tightening those down and then just continue putting all the rest of the hardware in the same way, alternating sides and snugging those down to the appropriate levels. All right, once we got everything uh, all snugged up, it was time to uh, get that tire ready to uh, roll that O-ring up. So you just simply push the tire down a little bit to expose the O-ring, roll the O-ring up into the groove, and bam, we've got a nice tight seal there on the two wheel halves. Back to the soapy water mix, got that on the rim. And now you can see I've used an additional 2x4, so now I'm a little bit higher because I'm, I've got to push this wheel down to, to touch the rubber uh, bead on the tire. And just my weight, simply holding that in and making it somewhat of an airtight seal with my son filling with the air, we were able to get that tire to pop right on the bead. No problem, I gave it a little air check, just kind of a feel check here. And uh, I could tell I need a little bit more air, so we just punched a little bit more air in there. And she came out perfect. Stop. Jeez. Perfect. That couldn't have worked more perfect.
All right, last step was to pound in that uh, hub using the rubber mallet and put the last remaining uh, three bolts on and, uh, or excuse me, the nuts. And we have a finished and completed tire. And that was very simple to do. Again, it was mostly a one-man operation until you get to the very end. Once we got her all aired up, cleaned up, everything was good, checked all the lug nuts out, and we were good to go. So guys, hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, if you found some value in it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video series. And uh, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next video.